Welcome to this Lucky 44 tutorial. This is going to deal with basic randomization for spawning things by using arrays and we're going to focus on spawning units and randomly choosing the units and randomly choosing the positions that they're going to spawn into. Um, so to start off I want to talk about script editors um, and by the way you know Arma 3 did a nice job of adding uh, some cool modules that make it a little easier for an editor to do some more powerful things without having to get into scripting but if you really want to go very far if you really want to do cool custom things you're gonna have to get under the hood and do some coding the good news is it's easier than you think and Arma makes it kind of a seamless transition from using no code to using just a little bit of code to using scripts to using more complicated scripts. So let's start off by talking about script editors. Okay, the most basic script editor that a PC user could use would be Notepad probably. It's a little program, this one here, that comes with uh, Windows um, and it can get the job done. You can do things with it. I've got this, you know, moderate script opened here, and I could do everything I need to do using that. But there are some better tools. <coughs> this second one here is called Arma Edit, and it's available through Armaholic. Um, it's been around for years, and it's a uh, its big advantage is that it lets you it's got color coding based on the syntax of the SQF language that ARMA uses. So you can see some of that. And it's it's got a lot of, it's, it's simple, it's easy to use. Um, you can configure a couple things and that makes it nice. I would say the next level up is something like uh, Poseidon, which is a variation, a customization of Sublime Text 2. And you can just tell by the uh, menu bar up here, there are a bunch more uh, things that you can customize. Um, it's got color coding based on SQF and some other things, but it'll, it also has more powerful tools uh, available th through the menu bar. Um, so I'm gonna use that for starters. Um, and again, you just search online for Poseidon or Sublime Text 2. You can start out using it for free. I should say Arma Edit is free uh, and you can later register it uh, if you want to contribute to the people who make it. Otherwise, you're going to get some messages that say, hey, how about registering? One little caveat before I get started. I want to make it clear that I don't claim to be a great programmer. I'm not a professional programmer. don't have a lot of training. learned a lot of what I know by practicing, by reverse engineering other people's scripts, by reading forums, and getting help from people who know more than me. So that said, let's talk about arrays. An array is simply a list. In SQF, the language that ARMA uses, they are contained in square brackets and each item in an array is separated by a comma. Let's look at an example. So here, my array zero, or I've named, I've created this first array by putting a name to it, and I'm using underscore my array zero. I use underscore because I want it to be a private array that's only used in this script. It's not shared with other scripts or other uh, clients. Um, and then I define it. Underscore my array zero equals, and then everything in the brackets, which uh, Poseidon or Sublime Text 2 is going to make pink, the brackets pink, and it's going to make the numbers, which are the elements of the array in green. So my array zero has four elements. They're separated by commas, and they're all numbers. That's fine. Um, my array one underscore my array one <coughs> has three elements and their names those are going to be variable names or uh, object names an object like a unit or a vehicle or uh, a flagpole or a hesco barrier something like that and in the third example underscore my array two we've got strings which means 
the uh, computer's going to read it like text. So it's going to take whatever's in the quotation marks, and it's going to take literally those letters or characters and treat it like text. Um, we'll talk about when you'd want to use those later. The important thing to know about arrays is that you've got to define them at some point, somehow. There are a lot of ways, but this is the basic way. And they're in square brackets, and they're separated by commas. You can have an empty array, you can have a huge array, you can change the elements as you go along, but that's what arrays are. Super powerful concept, something you got to know if you're going to get very far in uh, scripting. Okay, so let's move on to an array that we might be using to spawn units, or an array of positions we might use to put those units in, or spawn them at. Um, Let's go to one thing you're going to want to know uh, is <coughs> about class names and uh, the ARMA website. I'm sorry, it's the forums at bistudio.com has this great uh, asset, which you should know. And it is called the ARMA 3 Assets, coincidentally. I'll put the link in my text below the video here. So down here you've got a bunch of uh, main categories and today we're going to spawn some OP4 uh, infantry. So I'm going to click the OP4 button and that brings up a new tab that has the different units here. And here, I don't know if you can read the word, but it says class. And sometimes we uh, use the term class name in uh, ARMA work to talk about that. Different than, so this unit's class name is O underscore soldier underscore F. His name, or the unit's name, is rifleman. And then you've got officer down here and O underscore officer underscore F. Um, the name is different than the class name. The code is going to need to use the class name, not the name. So let's pick a few, let's take O soldier. I'm going to copy it here and paste it into uh, my script here. And I'm going to put quotation marks around it. Uh, and I'm going to actually, let's start by naming the array. And I'm going to call it uh, inf units. And typically, coders do not capitalize the first letter of a variable like this, but they do capitalize things to separate words, so I'm going to leave that there. Inf underscore inf units equals, I need a square bracket, I need a quotation mark, now I've got my first element. O soldier is my first element of the array. <coughs> I'm going to pick a couple more randomly, mm, let's say O soldier O2. Put it in quotes, and S Sublime Text 2 is furnishing the end quote for it. You might notice in there. Let's pick no, and let's pick a Grenadier. And I've got, I put the first quote in, and it furnishes the second. And let's actually, you know what? I'm going to change that O Soldier 2 to something more distinctly visible. Mm, how about a missile specialist? Where are you? AT. O soldier AT. O soldier. So let's replace that with that. Um, you can see there's a nice pattern to the way BIS has uh, named things. So they're all O soldier. They've all got F at the end. The AT guy has AT, the Grenadier has GL, makes a lot of sense. Okay, and I close my array with a square bracket, and I put a semicolon because that's the SQF uh, symbol to tell it this is the end of the line. Okay, now I'm going to delete my other array, my practice arrays. So here's my array. <coughs> it's a list of three things. It's got three different types of soldiers in it, that's my array that I'm going to use. And what I want to do, the reason I'm creating this array, is I want to pick a random element from that array to be the kind of soldier that I'm going to spawn. So this will give me uh, 
three objects. It's going to have an equal chance to pick from all of them. Later I'll get into if you want to uh, have different odds for different units. Um, but for now, keep it simple. Three types of units. I, I could make 50 types of units in there. But for now I'm just going to keep it simple and say three. I should back up a minute to explain the big picture of what we're trying to do here. Let's go back to my list here. What we want to do is create a list of units to pick from, pick a random element, random member of that list to be the type of unit that we're going to spawn, and we're going to pick, create another list of positions, locations on the map at which to spawn my randomly picked unit. Uh, I think that's all we need to explain now. So I'm starting out here with a list of uh, units. Now I'm going to create a new variable and that's just going to be unit and the unit is going to be defined as the random element that I pick from my inf units list or array. So to do that I'm going to say inf units uh, call <coughs> <coughs> bis fnc which means function select random so and you can see that uh, Poseidon or Sublime Text 2 knows that that's it's colored inf units one color because it's got uh, local variables colored in a sort of purple it's got certain text colored differently like call is a key syntax word so that's in one color and the function is in green for a different uh, color because it's a function. And what that's going to do is it simply says take my list inf units and randomly select one element and that's going to be the definition of what underscore unit is. Okay at this point let's go into Arma editor and I've already got a unit placed on the map and uh, blue rifleman I'm gonna just move them over here and I'm gonna create a marker and I'm gonna call it mm, something really creative like spawn point 1a uh, it's an invisible marker I'm leaving it uh, as an empty marker with the default color so it won't show up in game and that's the point. That, that name is what I need now because I'm going to spawn something at that location. So let's go back. Um, so I'm going to define a spawn point, which I will creatively call spawn PT to save a few characters, equals. And I can't just say the name of the marker. I have to uh, because, well, what I want is the location. So I'm going to write this now and explain it a little more in a second. I'm going to use get marker pause to get the marker position. And now I need to give it in quotation marks because it's uh, a text name. Spawn point 1A was the name I gave it. So what that's going to do is underscore spawn PT is going to equal an array of XYZ positions. For example, and I'm going to put two slashes, which means everything following the two slashes are going to be comments that the script won't read when it's executed. Um, it might look like this. You know, it'll be a map X position, comma, a map Y position, and a map Z position, which is the vertical, which is usually something close to zero. So what you see there in the brackets is roughly uh, is an example of what spawn point might look like. I'm not going to get into it now, but I just wanted to show you, I mean, exactly what it's going to be given where I put that marker on the map. Okay, so we've got our unit, which was randomly picked. We've got our position. 
our location where we're going to spawn it. Let's take a look at something else you should know. <coughs> um, you need to know the BIS wiki, um, which you can find at community.bistudio.com slash wiki. And I've got, I've called up the create unit listing and it's going to tell me what I need to know about how to create a unit. Um, and that is, let's see, is there a way I can make that bigger? Well, I'm going to type it in here. <coughs> um, I'm going to make this even bigger. Hope that's big enough. So here's the syntax for create unit. You put the type that you're going to create, you use the term create unit, and then you put an array of its position where it's going to spawn, it, the group it's going to be in, any uh, code you want to give it when it spawns, its skill level, uh, and its rank. Now, when I come back here and I look at the explanation for all these things under the parameters, it tells me that th uh, the class name is going to be a string, um, the position is got to be there, and that's going to be an XYZ array. The group, it has to join an existing group, good to know, and then the init, the skill, and the rank are all optional. So I don't need to include those. It'll default to uh, a skill level of 0.5 out of 1, so that's like a 50% skill level, and it'll default to a, a rank level of private. So let's do this. <coughs> the type is already defined by my unit, right? Um, we So if my random pick was the first one, my type is going to be quotation mark O underscore soldier underscore F quotation mark. So that's exactly what it needs. Then I'm going to use the text create unit and then I'm going to give it the position which is going to be what what spawn PT comma separate the elements of the array with a comma the group ah I need a group okay so first I have to create a group but let's call it uh, spawn GRP for group and that's all I need to give it is those two things uh, I close the array with the square bracket and I put a semicolon to end it. I'm not going to bother with skill and uh, rank. But there's a problem here because the group hasn't been defined yet. So I have to go up before the create unit and I have to create a group. So I'm going to use, I'm going to create, I'm going to define a group called spawn grp and I'm going to use the uh, syntax create group and then I need to give it a side so let's say it's east which is op4 alright so now I've already I've defined the group using the create group uh, symbol and you know what just to show you how to use the wiki I'm gonna look up create group and it tells me the syntax. All I need is the group name defined as create group and then the side. And here's their example. Underscore group equals create group east. And there's some other related information down there. Okay, so let's give it a go. Uh, what, now there's one little problem. How do we start that script running? And I'm going to do something simple. Let's see. Let's put a trigger down. Triggers triggers have their limit to where they're useful or smart to use. Um, I'm going to make the trigger 10 meters by 20 meters, a rectangle. And the condition is activated by blue 4 being present. And when it says this for the condition, it's going to refer to this stuff up here. So when the blue four is present, it will do here this. 
So I'm just going to say, I'm going to use this generic term handle equals exec VM and the name of the script, which is spawn array dot SQF. I believe that's right. I have to, let's go check myself. Spawn array, sample array. Haha. -ha. Okay. Come back here. Not the best name in the world. Okay. So when this trigger is executed, which will happen when a blue four unit is detected in it, it will execute this SQF that we just created. So let's make this a little smaller. Let's make it three by 10. So here's my trigger. And when my rifleman crosses into this area, go back and show the marker over here at the marker. Eh, let's move it down here a little, a little farther away. It will spawn a unit there. Uh, it will randomly pick from my list of three and spawn them. Let's see how it goes. All right. I know that as soon as I move forward, it's going to happen. There he is. Looks like the missile specialist. Hey, you. He's really taking his time to notice me. Oh, okay. That's better. All right. That's all we needed to see. Okay. There's one more thing to go over, and that is I randomized the type of unit that was chosen to spawn by creating what is on line three here, the uh, array underscore inf units with those three types of units to possibly choose. But now I'm adding a an, an couple new things. I'm adding spawn pause for position array and I'm giving it three positions to pick from. Originally I was just going from spawn point 1a and I had defined spawn point as get marker pause spawn point 1a. Now I'm giving it three options to pick from. Um, and similarly, I've used, just like I did for picking the unit, I've taken my array, my, uh, my array, I say my array that I just made. Notice the nice way that uh, Poseidon shows me when I select it here, it shows me where else it appears. And I've used call function select random, um, and I've defined a new variable, spawn pause. So now I'm saying, my spawn point equals get marker pause spawn underscore spawn pause. So it's going to get the XYZ position of the randomly chosen one of these three. And it's going to use that for the spawn location. Let's go here. So I've created three spawn points and I've got my old one, spawn point 1A, in the middle of the street, and then I've got one around this corner and one around that corner. Let's see what happens. <coughs> okay, I know that in front of me is the trigger, so I'm going to move into the trigger. Oh, he spawned into that position. Let's try it again, just to demonstrate how it's randomized. Okay, he didn't spawn there. It randomly picked another position. Let's see. There's that wall. Let's see if he's around that corner. Doesn't look like it. Whoa, there he is. <laughs> All right. So that time, it randomly picked the second position. Uh, I think that's all you need to know. So we've used the... Let's get back here. Um, we've used the BIS FNC select random to select the unit that's going to spawn and from an array of positions, the position where it spawns. 
you've got some pretty powerful tools just in these simple ideas of using arrays and using select random. There's a whole lot more you can do with arrays. We're not even getting into it, whole world of it. Um, but there's an essential uh, skill. That's it for this one.